Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the spirit of life that you have given us through your Son. And uh, without the spirit, we cannot worship you in truth, Lord. You are looking for those who will worship you in truth and spirit. And so may you have a people in this generation who will be prompted by the moving of the spirit of thy Son to do what they do. And so thank you for this time. And as we study your word, may you take charge of everything in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank God for this uh, presentations on Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages. Welcome to the study of number four of ten, Worship Him. We have already looked at uh, three presentations. Number one, why are the three angels' messages? And uh, we looked at number two in the series, the everlasting gospel. Then we looked at number three, fear God. You can check on uh, our website, uh, on YouTube uh, channel, and uh, on my timeline for the aforementioned presentations. And so this hour, I like to look at uh, still the first angel's message, worship him. And uh, we know that uh, these messages uh, will be given with a loud voice. They were given and they have to be given until the end of uh, the close of probation and so God bids us to worship him we must know him to be able to worship him and he's seeking a people who can worship him in truth and in the spirit and so in Revelation chapter 14 verses 7 the angel is heard saying with a loud voice remember these angels are flying in the midst of heaven and we have established that um, there are messengers oh, we see jesus christ walking amongst the candlesticks and in revelation chapter 1 verse 1 the father gives the message to jesus christ and he gives it to uh to the angel and the angel gives it to john and then we are reading the messages and expounding on them so we read fear god and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea and springs of water so let us look at uh, the book of uh, romans 1 25 what uh, it entails Romans 1 25 uh, instead of men worshiping the creator they changed to worshiping uh, the creatures and this is what the Lord is warning us uh, about uh, that uh, they changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed who is blessed forever amen and so uh the world we are living in people have drifted into a materialistic way of living and instead of worshiping the creator they have turned to worshiping uh the creature and the lord is warning his people that uh, they may not worship the creature but uh, they may worship the creator continue on we are told in revelation 14 11 thou art worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and 
for thy pleasure they are and were created. The reason why we have to worship God is that he created all these things for his pleasure. And God doesn't need these things to be. But um, God being uh, uh, an architect who knows what is needful for everyone, he first did the creation of the things that man need before he created man. It will have been hard for Adam to survive. Uh, it, it, it's not logic and it will have not been logic for man to be created than the things he need. So the things he needed were created first and then Adam was created. So when we talk about God uh, creating things for his own glory and own and power, actually these things were created for the use of man for God is not dependent on these things, but man is dependent on these things. And so we are told, worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea. This is speaking of creation and quoting from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 and 11, which we understand so well. And so at the end of the three angels' messages where we looked at uh, the patience of the saints uh, the, the third angel's message ends by saying here is the patience of the saint here are they who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ in Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11 we read remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work but uh, the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And so, uh, just uh, looking at uh, the book of Exodus chapter 8 verses, uh, chapter 20 verses 8 to 11, we find that uh, the Lord of the Sabbath is the Lord that is calling us to worship him. And so, unless we recognize the Lord of the Sabbath, we won't be able to worship the true God. How do we know which day is the seventh day then? The Sabbath. Uh, the Bible proves it. Astronomy proves it. The language itself proves it. And the history proves it. And we can go into details about this. And even in some new translations, you will find that preparation day is on the Friday. The Sabbath day is Saturday and the first day is Sunday. Now, just to give uh, uh, some disclaimer, uh, some uh, disclaimer, I'm not saying that Saturday is the Sabbath. The way people understand Saturday is not the way it should be uh, uh, understood as the Sabbath day because in the, in the naming of the days and in their reckoning, uh, they are taken from uh, uh, the Romish way of doing it, which uh, is uh, uh, dating the day or uh, 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 chronicling the day from uh, 12 in the night uh, until 12 in the night. But we are talking about the Sabbath where the Lord says that in the evening and the morning were the first day, which means that at the sunset, the day begins and at the sunset, the day ends. So the Sabbath day is sunset to sunset. Uh, I, I just wanted to make that correction. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made Genesis 2, 1 to 3. And so we are trying to establish that uh, to worship him first we must realize who is this God and what has he done because we are told that uh, he created everything and uh, they that are in the earth and in the sea and all that is in it, God created. So, uh, 
uh, the, the, it teaches us that we raise trust in his work of salvation. When we talk about worshiping the Lord who uh, made everything and rested on the Sabbath day, we are uh, talking about entering into the rest of the Lord. Keeping God's Sabbath is not legalistic, it is salvation by grace. Uh, when the Lord had finished his work, he rested, not because he was tired, but um, to uh, 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 to be joyous over what he had done. He said that everything he had done, it was perfect. And so when we come into the Sabbath, because uh, the cycles into uh, 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 the, the, the the Sabbath, it was uh, it, it 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 became uh, it was given in, to us in a new sense after sin. Sorry, uh, the Sabbath when first it was given to us, it was just a repose to know that um, it is the God who created everything. But after sin, now it is a sign of recreation, as the Lord sanctified the day and rested in it. So when we come to rest in the Sabbath, we acknowledge recreation and perfection that was lost when sin ended. It demonstrates that God is able to take something without form and void and make it very good. When Satan uh, tempted Adam and Eve and they sinned, they were separated from God and they, they lost the image of God, the inner image of God and even the outward semblance of God uh, you see how man has deteriorated both morally and physically. They lost it. But um, as we commemorate uh, 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 the creation by coming into the Sabbath, we are recreated. And that image that man lost, he demonstrates that it has been given back to him only by the blood of Jesus Christ. But didn't Jesus change the Sabbath? Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy it, but to fulfill. Many will say that Jesus Christ changed the Sabbath, but Christ says that he came to fulfill it. Something that you fulfill is not something that you do away with. For assuredly, as I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Matthew 5, 17, 18. So when we talk about worshiping God, we are talking about knowing who is this God so that we may be able to worship him with knowledge. And so we are told that to worship God, uh, fear God. Uh, I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory. Worship him who made uh, the earth and all this. And we are told for the hour of his judgment is come. For the hour of his judgment is come. Now, why must we fear God and give glory to him? And uh, I have uh, labored in presentation number three to talk about the fear of God, what it actually means. It is being perfected in love. So for the hour of judgment is come. Indeed, at present, the case of each believer is being judged in the heavenly sanctuary in order to determine the genuineness of each conversion. And the supreme basis of judgment is God's law. Because where there is a court seated, we have the court, the judge, the advocate, the prosecutor, and the one uh, who has been uh, uh, brought into the court. Why has he been brought to the court? Because there is a law and the law has been broken. And so the judgment is held. And for that judgment to be there, there must be a law corresponding to that. We are told from the inspiration, those who are living upon the earth, when the intercession of Christ shall cease in the sanctuary above, are to stand in the sight of a holy God without a mediator. Their robes must be spotless. Their characters must be purified from sin by the blood of sprinkling. Through the grace of God and their own diligent effort, they must be conquerors in the battle with evil. While the investigative judgment is going forward in heaven, while the sins of penitent believers are being removed from the sanctuary, there is to be a special work of purification, of putting away sin among God's people upon the earth. 
this work is more clearly presented in the messages of Revelation chapter 14. When this work shall be have been accomplished, the followers of Christ will be ready for his appearing. So through the grace of God, the Holy Spirit, and their own diligent effort, what does it mean by diligent effort? Paul says that uh, 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 work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who uh, gives us this will, uh, who gives us the will to be able to overcome this. So when we talk about diligent effort, our own diligent effort is not to take the grace of God in vain and putting ourselves where we shall be prone to temptation. We should not uh, uh, bring ourselves to temptation, but uh, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we should be able to shun all appearances of uh, evil. And so the day of judgment in the Jewish uh, uh, festival uh, calendar, we had uh, the three, the seven most important feasts. That is the Passover, and then uh, we had uh, the unleavened bread. We had the first fruits. We had the pen, the feast of weeks. Then we had uh, uh, the feast of the trumpets, and then the day of atonement, and the feast of the tabernacles, and so. In the book of Daniel chapter 8, we are given a time prophecy, which I'll not go into much about it. And to 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. The sanctuary was cleansed on the day of atonement and the sins blotted out. Uh, when you read the margin of uh, Daniel 8.14, it reads, the sanctuary shall be justified, the sanctuary shall be made whole again, uh, and the sanctuary shall be restored in it is rightful uh, uh, state and so uh, the whole theme of the 2300 days in daniel chapter 8 verse 14 is the cleansing of the sanctuary and we are given there the time prophecy of 2300 days which we can look in it in details when uh, you go to the book of uh, da daniel chapter 9 verses 24 going Forward, we are told that uh, this time period of uh, Daniel 8 14, 70 weeks are cut off, and taking a day year principle, we find that um, 70 weeks will be 490 days, which is 400 literal years. And so, the decree we are given the decree in Dan Daniel chapter 9, verses 24, that um, uh, when the decree shall go forth to rebuild Jerusalem, then this prophecy starts and it rolls. These 490 years are cut off. And when you add 490 years to 457 BC, when this decree was given, you are brought to uh, 34 AD. But um, before that, we are told that um, 69 prophetic weeks, which are 483 literal years, will run unto Messiah, the Prince, his baptism. And then you remember that we have 69 weeks and then the 70 weeks. So we have one week which is pending there. And Daniel chapter 9 says that uh, in the midst of the week, Messiah shall be cut off. When you take the midst of the week, it is three and a half uh, days representing three and a half years. And uh, in the midst of his work in AD 31, Christ was crucified. And the other three and a half years, the message went to the Jewish people and then they rejected it by stoning Stephen in Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 60. And so the Jewish people closed their probation and the 70 prophetic weeks of Daniel chapter 9 ended in AD 34. But remember, 490... Uh, uh, days or literal years, which is 70 prophetic weeks, was cut off from the 2300 days which was given in Daniel chapter 8 verse, four, verse 14. Because in Daniel chapter 8, when Daniel thought to understand of these things, and he read in the book of Jeremiah that the captivity of 
the children of Israel will be 70 weeks. But now he's given a period of 2300 days, which is a long period, and he understands their years. He fainted. And so the angel could not continue with the conversation in Daniel chapter 8. And he comes in Daniel chapter 9 to give the more light on 2300 days. And so 490 or 70 weeks are cut off from that period of 2300 days. And so when you remove 490, you remain with uh, 1810. Now, when you add 1810 to 34 AD, you come to 1843 and they proclaim the hour of the judgment is coming. When you take away the zero years, you reach to 1844, October 22. And so this is the chart of the 2300 days you can uh, ask for a detailed study on this and so we are told until 2300 days then the sanctuary shall be cleansed the sanctuary shall be restored what had made the sanctuary unclean it was by the daily services when a person sinned they came with a lamp and the priest gave a knife to the sinner and he slew the lamb without a spot then the priest took the blood and went and sprinkled on the veil that separated the holy and the most holy place then the veil of the sanctuary was unclean because the sinner had just taken the life of a spotless lamb and his sin exchanged for it and so the blood it was as uh, it was carrying sin into the sanctuary and so the sanctuary had to be cleansed the sins had to be blotted out and this is what we are told from uh 1844 with the time period given about the cleansing of the sanctuary the lord entered into the most holy place to begin the final phase of uh, the sanctuary services and so the jewish held their 490 years from 457 to AD 34 then the gentiles uh, uh they, they they rejected the jesus christ and crucified him and stoned stephen and then the message goes to uh, the gentiles and now the judgment has been going on and it will go on until probation uh closes so what is the conclusion of the whole matter? Fear God and keep his commandment, for this is the whole duty of man, for God will bring every work into judgment. So when judgment is going on, what God is looking at is what is the duty of man on the day of atonement? What is the duty of man on the day of atonement? It is to seek the presence of the Lord to accept the atoning blood of Jesus Christ as the sacrifice which is spotless and then exchange his sins with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So on the day of judgment, what actually is being investigated is do you live according to your profession? You say that you have given Jesus Christ your sins. So in the day of atonement, then Christ has to blot out your sin because he is the Lamb of God that uh, carries the sin of the world and he has to clothe you with his own righteousness. But if on the day of atonement, the sinner will not give Jesus Christ his sin and accept his righteousness, then we are told that they are blotted out of the camp of Israel. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgment. I have done justice and righteousness. And he said to me, for 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Cleansing in the sanctuary and judgment is a good thing to the saints. Uh, I love the issue of judgment because in the day of atonement, you receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and you give him your sin. What is so big about that why can't we accept that it is because we do not love jesus christ enough it is because we don't want to live our darling ways of living and accept the offers of mass that has been given to us with the infinite price of jesus christ and so uh this is 
what we are told uh, uh, in Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. And uh, I, I, want, I, I want to bring to your attention something so uh, good to look at. Daniel chapter 7 verses 12. Daniel 7 verses 12. Concerning uh, uh, concerning this judgment and what is happening, uh, I want us to get a picture of worshipping God, what it entails and judgment. Uh, look at Daniel chapter 7 verse 12 clearly. As concerning the rest of the beasts, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and time. That is something to think about. While judgment is going on, we have the beasts of Daniel chapter 7. We have the lion. We have the, the bear raised on one side and having three ribs. We have the leopard and we have the nondescript beast. And so, concerning the first three, their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season. Prolonged in which beast? In this nondescript beast, how do I know that it is in this nondescript beast that their lives were uh, prolonged in? Just looking at uh, Revelation, just looking at uh, Revelation chapter 13 you will see that uh, the lives of this beast were prolonged in the nondescript beast which is the roman empire and there is a point i want to make and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy and the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, which is the kingdom of Greece. And his feet were the feet of a bear, which is made of Persia. And the mouth of a lion, which is Babylon. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So let us go back to Daniel chapter 7 verse 12. So concerning the other three beasts, their dominion was taken away, but their lives. What does it mean by life? The life encompasses a uh, character, mind, personalities, uh, 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 I mean uh, practices. This is what encompasses life. Character. A, a person's life is known by his character. And so the characteristics of the other beasts were prolonged in this nondescript beast. Now, why did I bring this up with what is going on in judgment? We are talking about in judgment, a sinner giving up his sin to Christ and receiving him his life. And so, while Christ is in heaven, his life is prolonged in the life of the believers. But if the sinner refuses the life of God, then the lives of the other three beasts are prolonged in him through the government of the uh, uh, of the of the beast out of the sea this roman uh, uh, empire and he does the will of this uh, uh, empire or this kingdom which his life he receives from the other three kingdoms. And what was the characteristics of the other three? We had Babylon. Babylon was known for the worship of idols and images and false gods. And then we had Medopatia, which had its infallibility. And so there are men who are infallible in their ways. There are men who worship idols. And then we have the Grecian Empire with their philosophies, with their education of this world. And so, if you refuse the life of Christ on the Day of Atonement, what you receive is the life of other three beasts which are prolonged in this fourth kingdom. But while the fourth kingdom is prolonging the life 
of the other three beasts, the Christians are prolonging the life of Jesus Christ on this earth. This is the statement that I wanted to make about the life being prolonged. And so God is calling us to be able to give our lives to him. Daniel says then, I watched till thrones were put in place and the ancient of days was seated. His garment was white as snow. And we know that the ancient of the days is God the Father. And the air of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A thousand thousands ministers to him, ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. So on this day of uh, atonement, this day of judgment, books are open. And so our lives, what we do is chronicled in the books in heaven and we shall be seeing in a short while which what are these books. Romans chapter 14 verse 12, So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Are we real worshippers of Jehovah? Are we real worshippers of the true God? Or are we prolonging the life of the other beast according to Daniel 7, 12? Or are we prolonging the life of Jesus Christ that is continuing in the uh, 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 life of Christ in this world? Rejoice, O young man, in your youth and let your heart cheer you in the days of your youth. Why? And remember, walk in the ways of your heart and in the sight of your eyes, but know that for all this God, this God will bring you into judgment. Truly these times of ignorance God looked, overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. And so we are told this in Acts chapter 3 verses 19. Acts chapter 3 verses 19 during this day of uh, atonement, we are told this, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. The hour of judgment is come. The sanctuary is being cleansed. What do you have to do? Repent from prolonging the life of the other beasts, and prolong the life of the Lamb. So repent ye therefore and be converted and that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. So in this time of blotting out the sins of the people, the refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Even as the Shekinah glory filled the temple during the day of atonement when uh, sacrifices had been accepted, so refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things, which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets, since the world began. And so the main work that is going on in this day of atonement is to determine whose sides are you on. Would you like to receive Jesus Christ in your heart and walk in newness of life and receive the refreshing from the presence of the Lord? Or would you want to live in pleasure in the kindling of your own? Or do you want to live for Christ? God has appointed a day for judgment and we are told unto 2,300 days and so, as it's appointed to men to die once, but after this, the judgment. When we die, our judgment closes. We are dead. We cannot praise God. We cannot do good or bad, but we have just sealed uh, our, uh, uh, our eternity. So, reverting back to Ecclesiastes uh, <coughs> sorry, 1214. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it's good or 
whether it is bad. And so, and there is no creature hidden from his sight, Hebrews 4, 13, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. This is, this is entailing worshiping him because the hour of his judgment is come. We are told, O oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You are familiar with all my ways. It is coming. Those comers in the wedding must be uh, inspected. Have they come with the garment uh, of righteousness that Christ has provided or they'll come on their own times? All days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Psalms 139, 1, 3 and 16. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they'll give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. That is why we don't have to just to speak anyhowly and have cozy jokes. Because by our words we condemn ourselves, brothers and sisters. Angry words, curse words, critical words, words of betrayal. The books of judgment. The books were open, Daniel chapter 7. And so, talking about these books, how many books were opened on this day of judgment? We read, the book number one is the book of life. The book of life contains the names of all who have ever entered into the service of God. Jesus bade his disciples, Rejoice because your names are written in heaven, Luke 10, 20. Paul speaks of his faithful fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Philippians 4.3 Daniel looking down to a time of trouble such as never was declares that God's people shall be delivered everyone that shall be found in the book. And the revelator says that those only shall enter the seat of God whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Daniel 12.1 and Revelation 21.27 This is from the great controversy the masterpiece 480 par paragraph 3 So one one of the books that were open on this day of judgment is the book of life. Another book was also open, the book of remembrance. A book of remembrance is written before God, in which are recorded the good deeds of them that feared the Lord, and that thought upon his name, Malachi 3.16. Their words of faith, their acts of love, are registered in heaven. Nehemiah refers to this when he says, Remember me, O my God, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God. Nehemiah 13, 14. In the book of God's remembrance, every deed of righteousness is immortalized. There are there every temptation resisted, every evil overcome, Every word of tender pity expressed is faithfully chronicled. And every act of sacrifice, every suffering and sorrow endured for Christ's sake is recorded. Says the psalmist, Thou tellest my wanderings, put thou my tears into thy bottle, are they not in thy book? Psalms 56, para, uh, Psalms 56 paragraph uh, Verses 8, I mean, this is from Great Controversy, page 480, paragraph 3 to Great Controversy 481.1. So, the book of remembrance. Another book is the record of sins. There is a record also of the sins of men. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment, says the Savior, by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Ecclesiastes 12, 14. Matthew 12, 36 and 37. The secret purposes and motives appear in the unerring register, for God will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsel of the hearts. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Behold, it is written before me, your iniquities 
and the iniquities of your fathers together saith the lord isaiah 65 verses 6 and 7 this is great controversy page 481 paragraph 2 now the last book that is open is the book of death great controversy page 660 paragraph 4 we read during the thousand years between the first and the second resurrection uh, ju the judgment of the wicked takes place the apostle paul points to this judgment as an event that follows the second advent judge nothing before the time until the lord come who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart 1 corinthians 4 5. daniel declares that when the ancient of days came judgment was given to the saints of the most high daniel 7 22 at this time the righteous reigns as kings and priests unto God. John in the Revelation says, I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. They shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Revelation chapter 20, verses 4 and 6. It is at this time that, as foretold by Paul, the saints shall judge the world. 1 Corinthians 6 2. In union with Christ, they judge the wicked, comparing their acts with the statute book, the Bible, and deciding every case according to the deeds done in the body. Then the portion which the wicked must suffer is meted out according to their works, and it is recorded against their names in the book of death. And so, when the books were open in the uh, in in the book of Daniel chapter nine, we had the book of life, the book of remembrance, the register for sins, and the book of death. These are the books that were open on the day of judgment. Then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. In this day. We must gather together and speak about the Lord, spread the message, worship Him in truth, not for the fear or the reward, but for the marvelous work that He has done for us. So a book of remembrance was written before Him, and we have seen that already. And we have words of encouragement, words of hope, words of courage, words of faith. We have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous. And so as we are going through this judgment, we have a one who is representing us and crying my blood my blood my blood and he says that those who believe on him those who accepted him he gave them the power to become sons of god my challenge this night have you become the son of god or do you fear judgment the saints don't have to fear judgment because it is not against them, but it is for them. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Amen. This is all we want to be, our names to be written in the book of life. But I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And so the first angel message applied, God wants us to read, share, and think on his word so we can be better uh, persons we have to live a practical life and uh, 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 and, uh, and and draw others to Jesus Christ and so in Proverbs chapter 2 verses 1 to 5 we hear of these words my son if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understand it year of thou Christ after knowledge if thou Christ after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding if thou seeketh her as silver and searchest for her as for hidden treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God God wants us to have a relationship with him a a, a, a relationship like a father has with his child he doesn't want us to fear him in the sense that uh, 
he is looking down upon us to punish us because of the mistakes we do. But we have an advocate before the Father, not because the Father is angry with anyone, but God decided to give himself. This is the love of God. He gave himself in his son. Many times we don't appreciate that God gave himself in his son. The suffering of the son was the suffering of the father. And so, as even judgment is going on, actually it is the character of God which is uh, uh, online. It is the one that is on fire. Can he reproduce a people that can answer the claims of the devil? Can he have a people who just looks like him? Because we cannot worship God aright if we do not have his spirit. For how shall we worship him, him that we do not know? We can only worship him if we know him better. And this is eternal life that we may know him. And when we know him, grace is multiplied unto us. And so uh, I praise the Lord that uh, on this day, he is concerned with conferring the righteous robe of his son upon me. While the judgment is going on, the work that the Lord is concerned with is making sure that our robes remain spotless. While really there is a judgment that is going on, it is not to be feared to the saints, for the judgment is for the saints, not against the saints. And so we can only fear God, we can only discredit him if we profess to be worshipping him while continuing or prolonging the life of the other three beasts in Daniel chapter 7 verse 12 and not prolonging the life of this lamb without spot. And so let us draw before the Lord with the, the courage, with the, uh, the strength that he is able to give us. In fact, I'll close with Hebrews chapter 4. The book of Hebrews 4. And uh, I'll read verses 14 to 16 as uh, we close. Let us draw nigh to God because he is willing to give us more exceedingly than we may think about. Let us close with Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing then, seeing then, sorry, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. If we are saying we are serving God and worshipping him, let us serve him and worship him with all our heart and mind. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like us, we are yet without sin. And that is what he wants to give us on the day of atonement. Repent ye be converted, that the time of refreshing may come from the Lord, and your sins may be blotted out. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. This is my prayer to you in Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you are seeking those who will worship you in truth and in spirit. And uh, our words, our deportments, Lord, they have to show whom we profess. Without this Holy Spirit, we are nothing. And so, Father, we come, you have bid us to come in this time of need. When we look around ourselves, Lord, there's nothing that can satisfy our hunger and our thirst. What we need is the peace of Jesus Christ in our heart. So that even when we worship you, we may worship you with one mind and one spirit. This I'm asking, Lord, 
you may help us forget about everything but not worshiping you in truth and spirit and so everything that makes us wander away from worshiping you in truth and spirit lord help us to overcome it may we have the same mind that thy son had and to focus on giving you glory and not giving anything glory your name be praised now and forevermore in christ jesus name amen